morning. This is today. It's Thursday, June 11th, 1970. The main news this morning. In this hour, our guests will be Roger Karras and the champion bow hunter Jim Doggerty. Uh, if you've seen Roger Karras on the program before, you know what his feelings are about sport hunting. On the other hand, Mr. Doggerty is all for it, especially with his bow and arrow. So in a few minutes, they're going to debate that issue. Naturalist Roger Karras has often criticized the way that hunting is done today, and some hunters have taken exception to his remarks, giving what they think are good and sufficient reasons for continuing that sport. There are some typical letters of protest that we've had. From Prescott, Arizona, Grand Junction, Colorado, Northbrook, Illinois. Uh, in addition to the letters, we also have this morning a hunter. He's Jim Doherty, a member of the Professional Archers Association, which is the professional and of the Professional Bow Hunter Society. He's considered one of the nation's foremost experts in the sport, if indeed it is a sport. Mr. Doherty has killed antelope, caribou, mountain lion, bear, sheep. And Roger Karras, who's also with us this morning, may or may not envy Mr. Doherty's skill, but I'm sure he has something to say about his accomplishments. Roger, what do you think of bow and arrow hunting? Well, I indeed uh, admire Mr. Doherty's skill as a man who use, has used rifle, pistol, and shotgun on target ranges, skeet and trap, and have tried bow and arrow hunting, not bow and arrow hunting, I beg your pardon, tried archery, I find it extraordinarily difficult. And anyone who can hit anything, even that 90-inch bull at 45 yards or put four consecutive arrows in, is an extremely skilled man. It's extraordinarily difficult. <clears throat> I question, though, whether the average archer has any right practicing on animals, particularly since he is using a weapon that has no shocking power. The impact at 100 yards from even a 60 or an 80 pound bow, which is very heavy, will be something in the vicinity of 30 pounds <coughs> with a broadhead hunting arrow, whereas even a 30 odd six, which is a pea shooter in today's hunter's arsenal, will impact with 2,440 pounds of foot energy. Now, if you're shooting a weapon that has no shocking power, Who's, the most you can hope to do is make the animal bleed to death, which is, in fact, the way archery kills animals. Well, let's give Mr. Dart a chance to reply to that. <clears throat> I think that uh, primarily there's one, uh, one area that uh, perhaps Roger missed. That is, we're talking about shooting something at 100 yards with a bow and arrow. Uh, this just simply is not done. The guys that hunt with a bow and arrow do not hunt and shoot at animals at 100 yards. Uh, the conditions under which they hunt, the weapon that they have elected to hunt with, dictates actually that they have to get closer and that in essence is the challenge to bow hunting to begin with. That is why I, for instance, prefer to hunt with a bow and arrow because I like the challenge of having to get closer. What difference does it make that you are closer? To and me, to uh, apply to what uh, Roger Karras was saying. Is in terms of uh, foot pounds of energy that he was uh, well, trying to make a comparison yes, between is, uh, in other the words, capabilities is it cruel of to, to hunt with a bow and arrow. Well, in answer to that question, I would say no, it is not cruel. To hunt. What would you consider a uh, maximum distance that you'd use a bow and arrow on an animal? I generally try to operate within uh, a 50-yard limit, sure. or inside of 50 yards. Can I read something? Certainly. Archery Magazine. Rules posted by the Rollins Chamber of Commerce for the first annual bow and arrow buffalo hunt. Posted rule number five. Archers will meet at the Chamber of Commerce office at 9.30 a.m. February 14th. to be divided into three groups. One group to kill each buffalo. Posted rule number seven. At ranch, registrants will draw for shooting position within their group. This will designate order in which they will shoot. Number one man will start the hunt, but will not be allowed to shoot under 75 yards. If he fails to down his bull with one shot, the number two man will shoot. If he misses, number three man shoots, and so on down the group. If the bull breaks the group, the captain will give the signal from that time on. The archer is on his own and may shoot as many times as is needed to make the kill. Posted rule number eight. After the first buffalo is killed or breaks out of the area, the number two buffalo will be brought in in a truck to the area for the number two group to proceed as did the first. There were 30 archers in the group. Three buffaloes were shot by the archers. All three buffalo had to be put out of their misery by a rifleman. Now, there, there was the posted rules for an archery contest. 75 yards was the minimum grouping, and 30 archers were unable to kill three bison. All of them were shot by riflemen. Now, is, is this your... Now, this is not something you'd approve of. Some archery magazine, by the way, in all fairness, did not approve of this hunt. They criticized it soundly and roundly. Well, it's, it's right, uh, reply. 
Let me ask one question in looking over your shoulder. Uh, it seems to me that there was a date of uh, Archery Magazine, March 1947. That's right, sir. I would like to uh, think that perhaps we progressed a little bit further in the intervening 13 or 23 years uh, since uh, such a hunt of that type was conducted. I think Roger will uh, admit and readily agree that buffalo hunting, if you want to talk about buffalo hunting, which is uh, a joke under today's standards on the... By any... The, by any all right, right, the way that anybody shoots a buffalo. Uh, buffalo are a, a managed animal. There's a few amount, a uh, relatively small amount of them on an annual basis. Fish and Game Department say, okay, we're going to shoot off so many of these buffalo. And uh, people go in there and shoot them. In fact, they actually shoot them in a corral. They do. Now, we're, now we're talking about two entirely different things. And in this case, we're not really not talking about hunting. And I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that you can say this is hunting. And that was, the date on that hunt was February 14th, 1947. Anne Arundel County, Maryland, September 7, 1969. 76 Bowmans from the Anne Arundel County Bowmans Club used three Catalina goats, captive bred goats, in a big game hunt. 76 sportsmen lined both sides of a dry creek bread. The goats were released into the draw one at a time. Not being wild, the goats stood around and munched grass instead of running. The Bowman shot away. Charles H. Milton, law enforcement chief of Maryland State Department of Game and Inland Fish, said he could not take jurisdiction over the hunt because, quote, there is so much domestic stock in these goats that they are definitely not wild animals. Bernard T. Foster, a member of the board of directors of the Archers Club that staged the affair, said he hoped to be chairman of the 1970 hunt. He said they would again use live animals but would, would not use goats of the domestic type killed on the club grounds on September 7th. 1969, in the year of our Lord. I would certainly hope not. I, um, I think that there's one thing I would like to say relative to your latest argument there, that I do not agree with that type of operation. I don't think that you could logistically or logically call that a hunt. You know, that is not a hunt. Uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate situation that uh, apparently does exist in certain areas where Animals in a semi-wild state, feral animals, if you will, are turned loose and then a group of people does pursue them. Now, this is a situation that I find appalling. Well, Mr. Doherty, perhaps I could ask you next, which I'll do in about a minute, uh, what, what you think is permissible in, in the way of, of bow hunting. But I'll, I'll hold off for about a minute on that because Joe has something to say. Mr. Doherty, so far I think we've talked about what both you and Roger Karras would agree are abuses. But what, in your view, is permissible? What's okay in the way of bow and arrow hunting? I think we can enlarge on that and say what is okay in, in terms of, of just general hunting. Uh, I believe that hunting should be conducted in the, in the wild state, so to speak, that it's a, a, a recreational outlet for a guy to uh, pursue in the manner that he would like to pursue it because he enjoys being out of doors. Hunting is, uh, is a recreation and hunting in the wild state I think is a very real challenge and I think it is a beneficial uh, situation for the animals that are being hunted. How, how is that? How is it good for the animals? Historically I think you would find, and I believe it is a fact, that, that hunting and hunters indeed are responsible for the continuation of our big game species. There's several reasons for this. One of the major reasons would be the fact that Hunting is utilized as a game management tool. And in a game management tool, this is to say that they are utilized to keep the herds, the big game herds that we hunt, within a balance that is in proportionate to their, their habitat, to the carrying capacity of their range. Hunting is not a helter-skelter situation. Hunting is a well-managed, well-organized business today. As is everything that we do, we live in a society of management. Everything we have properly done is well-managed. Our hunting, our natural resources are, are well managed. We hunt today under the guidelines that are established by our wildlife agencies. The hunter, in fact, is the backbone of our wildlife agencies in that they probably have the most significant um, role in supporting that agency in terms of pure finances, if nothing else. Therefore, the, the system, the circle that uh, tells us what is best for these animals, the people that the trained biologists, scientists, game and engineers, think, that make the recommendations as to what should be taken to ensure a healthy, vigorous herd, to in fact guarantee the future of that herd, 
comes from these game managing types, which are supported, in fact, financed largely by the hunter's dollars. Roger. I don't think there's anything, any, any question about what Jim says is right. Uh, if there were not hunters, there probably would not be any animals <clears throat> for anti-hunters to worry about. Ducks Unlimited gave us the <coughs> ducks. Of course, the fact that the white-tailed deer will overgraze its range, starve to death, and stunt the herd is due to the fact that hunters killed the mountain lion and the wolves that used to hunt the deer. But that's history. You can't do anything about that now. Uh, what would you, the question though I'd like to ask is, is what would you consider minimum acceptable qualification for a man to go afield with a bow and arrow? What would the minimum pull be on the bow, and what would his minimum skill be? Because I know that a rifleman on the range would be expected at least at 50 yards and probably at 100 yards to put four bullets into a one-inch bull, one-inch circle. Uh, the standard archery range is, what, 35 or 45 yards, and has a 9-inch bull. Mm -hmm. And I am told by Claire Connolly, who has a very high rating as an archer, that not one out of ten, I believe was the quote, ever could put four consecutive arrows into a 9-inch bull, even at 35 yards. What would you consider minimum? I'd like to back up one step first, if I may, then we'll come back to that. Okay, uh, in relationship to your comment on the white-tailed deer will overgraze its range. And uh, the reason that they do overgraze the range today is because the hunters controlled the predators that used to keep them in check. It's perhaps true in part. However, it is further true that uh, the shrinking environment uh, created by our civilization has probably had a greater factor in the white-tailed deer overgrazing their, their range than any predatory control that was ever done. Getting on to uh, what qualifications would be uh, best suited to uh, allow a guy to go into the field with a bow and arrow, and in your argument that a gun hunter, in some cases in some states, I don't know that it's on a national basis, frankly, is required to pass a hunting test. To the best of my knowledge, a gun hunter is not required by law to pass a hunting test in most states. Now. For the purpose of special hunts, for instance, in California, they have a controlled hunt on Tule Elk, where they shoot a surplus off on a given year. Then a hunter that draws a tag on that particular hunt is required to pass a shooting test. Generally speaking, a gun hunter is not required to pass a shooting test. A duck hunter is not required to go out and break 25 straight on a trap range before he goes duck hunting. He should be. Well, what he should really be is probably allowed to go into the field with only eight shells so he won't shoot at him 80 yards in the air, but that's another story. I think, I think maybe we're going to have to ask Mr. Karras, Mr. Doherty to continue, <laughs> continue this at some other time because we really didn't settle it. Perhaps we can't, but well, we made a try. Joe? Okay.